Welcome inside another episode of Mountaineer Report here. <laughs> Brought to you by WV Sports Now, available everywhere you get your podcasts. And on this edition of the show, we are going to preview a game that maybe some thought was going to be a big game between two programs that could argue kind of being historic, that feel like maybe they could be top dogs in the new Big 12 that ends up being a game between two disappointing programs that I don't know if anyone nationally is going to check in, but we're going to cover it nonetheless. So we are going to preview West Virginia and Arizona, 7 p.m. kickoff time this Saturday. FS1 didn't end up being the 10.30 p.m. that many thought on the East Coast would happen. Didn't end up being a, a premier Fox game, but it is a game of two teams that desperately need a win. So, Mike Osta here, Mountain Report here, again on WV Sports Now. Find us on YouTube, also everywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, tune in, download, subscribe. And I am going to be joined by Justin Spears, who is the Arizona football beat writer with the Tucson Star and also a host on ESPN Tucson. I actually joined him to kind of preview this game as well a few days ago at the beginning of this week. So, Justin, thanks for jumping aboard, man. No, thank you for having me on. And it's funny, I actually did not plan this, but I was cleaning out my my closet the other day, and I was going through some of my old NCAA games, and I came across this gem, Owen Schmidt. Oh, wow. Wow, yeah. Former West Virginia fullback on the cover of NCAA Football 09 on the PSP cover. Again, I did not plan this, but I'm like, oh, I'm going on with the West Virginia guys. Let me (laughs) show off my PSP cover. Yeah, it's the human beer truck right there. That is is a a different era of West Virginia football. Much greater days back back in those days, but that is a great cover for sure. And you kind of a connection there. You kind of could also call this the Rich Rod Bowl. Obviously, the connection is there from being from West Virginia, coaching the Mountaineers, and then leaving a little bit. And then after the Michigan experience, eventually coaching at Arizona, had a, a pop of a 10-win season there. And, of course, now Rich Rod with Jacksonville State. So while these two programs, again, think of better days, maybe with Rich Rod as the coach, and some fans, although probably still a minority of the, at least the West Virginia fan base, I'd be curious about Arizona, pining for Rich Rod again, we have a game to play. And at least for this week, they're going to be coached by the current coaches and the current players, not Owen Smith, are going to be playing in this game. So unfortunately to the fans. So, Justin, I see right now sportsbook wise, Arizona, they're home. They're favored. The line opened up, I believe, around two, two and a half. I think now it's three, three and a half, depending on the sports book. I would imagine that's mostly because they are home. Do you think that's fair or foul? Do you think that's about right from what you know? Because I did read some of your coverage, and it almost seems like this is an undermanned Arizona team that you wouldn't be surprised if this goes West Virginia's way despite the long road trip. Yeah, I thought that maybe the fact that this is a home game, that's the reason why Arizona is favored. I really feel like if this game was okay. in Morgantown, it would be the other way around. Okay. Uh, because I think Arizona is very banged up on defense, and – you know, as you could know, West Virginia is also pretty banged up on offense. Yeah. And when I look at how these two teams match up against each other, it's like the Spider-Man pointing meme. <laughs> you know, they are so evenly yeah. matched with yeah. injuries on air with Arizona. It's on defense, West Virginia, it's on offense. Um, it, Arizona's defense, while they are banged up, this has been a unit that has kind of carried this team over the last several weeks. Arizona's offense um, ever since putting up 61 points, against New Mexico in that season opener, they've been averaging just under 17 points per game. Uh, The last time that they scored seven points in a game last week against Colorado, the last time they did that was when they lost 70 to seven to ASU in 2020, which got Kevin Sumlin fired. It was the fewest yards that they had in a single game since that one and 11, 2021 season. So, you know, while West Virginia has had its struggles over the last couple of weeks, same with the Arizona Wildcats. It would, and it would not surprise me if the Mountaineers came in and won this game. And honestly, it feels like this is like a must win for both teams. 100%. 100%. Yeah, and not only for the season because the realistic path to winning the Big 12 is probably not happening for either team. But I, I also think it's a must win game to salvage anything of a good year. And I'm yeah. Quotes up for the video listeners and just imagine them for the podcast listeners. And then also 
to save the vibes, maybe save some jobs. And again, there are fans that maybe don't want these jobs saved. The vibes are just not good. And for West Virginia, you also do have a, a bye week after this game. So you you win, you go to a bye. You can't lose on a bye, obviously. Brown's already pretty much said they're all going to go dark on social media. Maybe that buys you a little bit of good faith for a couple weeks before then you go into an easier stretch of your schedule. Justin Spears joining me here, Arizona beat writer for the Tucson Star and also host with ESPN Tucson here as we are previewing the Mountaineers and Wildcats. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if this game went either way, honestly. This almost seems like one of those games that I don't know if I'd recommend the betting uh, on this one. I mean, no. this, this could go either way and no one would be shocked. You did mention West Virginia also banged up on offense in particular, but even also on defense. I mean, Aubrey Burks, who PFF loves, I'm sure you've seen, he can't get on the field this year. He's going to miss again. Eddie Vesterinen, who was a part of the starting defensive line, he's been out for weeks. I've seen him in person, and uh, they haven't announced out for the year, but I cannot imagine that man coming back uh, <laughs> um, from how I've seen him walk around and what he has on his body. So, And they're, they're looking at a lot of backups in the secondary. So I do kind of want to ask you, because West Virginia fans know what the hell's gone wrong for the Mountaineers. I mean, they thought this was a year that they were going to take nine wins and be a big 12 contender. They thought Garrett Green would take a step and be even better. Some, it seems insane now, thought he could be a dark horse for many individual awards, even the Heisman, as wild as that now sounds. They thought this team could do this this year, despite knowing the out-of-conference schedule being tough and even it kind of being front-loaded with difficult games. But what's happened for Arizona? Because they also were preseason darling. They also were ranked, or they were a ranked team to open up the season preseason wise. Many thought they would be the team to do it in the Big 12, if not any of the teams that are now contending. But they've been off the radar. So why? Yeah. Outside of the I, injuries, I guess that could be a, could be a reason. Of course, I mean injuries play a huge factor. But yeah. I mean, like I said, the defense is actually performed well they forced takeaways in four straight games uh they have really done a great job of stopping the run in the last several games so defense they've held up their own despite all these injuries it's the offense that can't get anything going like i said ever since that 61 point game to start the season arizona's offense just hasn't really found its rhythm a lot of slow developing plays like if you watch arizona's past game there doesn't really s seem to be like a a snappiness to it. When you look at okay. Noah Fafita, their quarterback's PFF numbers, uh, last year, he pretty much played every single game, getting the ball out in less than three seconds. All but one game this season, it's been over three seconds. So he's old, he's holding onto the okay. ball. There's not really any identity to this Arizona offense. And even the run plays too, like the handoffs are very slow. Noah Fafita very rarely ever pulls the ball and keeps it himself. We saw him get out on a couple of runs against Colorado last week, but the offense right now, uh, I think the play calling has been a little suspect. Uh, Teta Roe McMillan is one of the best receivers, if not the best receiver in all of college football, and he only had five targets last week. Like he was talked just, a lot talked a lot about during West Virginia's press conferences this week. He was mentioned he, a lot. He's a stud. You know, he's a first yeah. round pick, a guy that's probably going to go top 15 in the NFL draft. So, you know, how can Arizona get those guys going, especially him? That's going to be key. But going back to your original question, like what happened for Arizona? Well, you know, the Wildcats went 10 and three last year. Yeah. And then Jed Fish went to Washington. Right. And people thought, hey, with Washington and their roster completely gutted and so many spots open, that Jed Fish is just going to transplant Arizona. And Noah Fafita and Teto Roe McMillan and Jonas Savianaya at on the offensive line and all these other great players and just bring them over to Washington. And those guys decided to zig when everyone thought they were going to zag. You know, they thought a lot of people, including myself, thought, oh man, they're going to go somewhere else. Yeah, it makes they're, sense. Yeah. It's either going to be a Washington or elsewhere, you know, if they get a great NIL check. And they decided to stay at Arizona. And you bring back Noah Fafita. T Mac, you bring back uh, three returning starters on the offensive line. A majority of the defensive backs were all back. You got preseason All Big 12 linebacker in Jacob Mana, who's out for the season after suffering a leg injury last week. Yet all these players that were 
the nucleus of the team last year that went 10 and three and beat Oklahoma in the Alamo bowl. So you felt the, the good vibes. However, Arizona did lose left tackle Jordan Morgan, who's a first round pick. Jacob Cowing, a wide receiver, a fourth round pick by the San Francisco 49ers. Tanner McLaughlin, who's an NFL tight end right now. So they lost a significant amount of firepower on offense. Also, defense, they lost their entire defensive line rotation from last season outside okay. of tight, tight, Ui Ugly. That'll do it. Yeah. So I, I think a lot of people were hopeful that, you know, the players that they have coming back in a pretty wide open Big 12, right, with Oklahoma and Texas, yeah. the two teams that have been the class of that conference for so long with those two teams going to the sec with the expanded CFP. Now at 12 teams, it right. was like, Hey, conceivably Arizona could get to the college football playoff. And then as yeah. we've seen, uh, it's really kind of fallen off the, the tracks over the last several yeah. weeks. And Arizona defensive coordinator, Dwayne Aquina has compared it to Apollo 13, right? They were, <laughs> they were, yeah. they were trying to get to the moon the oxygen yeah. tank exploded and they're like, okay, <laughs> let's get some duct tape. Let's plug the hole. Let's just figure out a way to live to yeah. see another day. And that's where Arizona football is at right now. <laughs> yeah. It's a perfect analogy. I think it fits for West Virginia. And I know that when I kind of described the Mountaineers on your show, you kind of said it was a mere image of what's gone on for Arizona this year, kind of their problems, the analogies and the vibes. And I think everything you said there also can fit for West Virginia because Neil Brown even talked about it before the season started that, Never really before in college football's history have it has it been so clear on how you can be a national contender and be a national champion. I mean, it was a hundred years of people just journalists like us just could randomly pick and we just would go with that. And then you're you're dealing with the advent of more polls and the BCS where you're involving computers, then a four team playoff, but that's even TCU getting in out of the Big 12, that still seemed very, very difficult. But now a conference champ gets in and that's all you got to know, really, if you're one of these Big 12 teams. You don't have to argue on whether it's a one, two, three, or four, where it ranks in the Power Four. You win this thing, you're in. I mean, Neil Brown was even trying to sell. He even admitted that he sells to recruits. Look, yeah, we lost some of the, the top dogs. The SEC and Big Ten are probably better conferences overall. There's more money there. But if you come here, it's easier to get in the playoff. And then you yeah. just don't know. That's kind of, yeah, that's kind of the same sales pitch that Arizona could sell as well. And there was talent coming back. They just won nine games. They won a bowl game over a major program as well. Neil Brown just saved his job. The vibes were much better. Someone said he went from the hot seat to the mayo seat, and that was true. And then you get in. Yeah, that wasn't bad. Yeah. And then you get into this season and, you know, the schedule was very tough. I don't know if you've looked at West Virginia's schedules. I do think they bungled the schedule a decade ago. They're they're playing 11 power fours. Everyone else is playing 10. They're playing all the rivals who are now usually ranked. It's been a mess, but they're basically beating up on bad teams and losing all good teams. And and the last two weeks have been really, really rough with embarrassing losses on national TV at home. So I kind of also do think that maybe going on the road can be a benefit to this team. They are totally away from all the energy that has been so bad. That is why I think maybe they, they could take this. Whereas if it was in Morgantown in the third straight week of this mess, probably not. And, you know, Arizona had a very similar situation earlier in the season. They lost to Kansas State and got completely boat raced. So this yeah. might be foreshadowing. Right. West Virginia, Virginia knows about right? that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Arizona went on the road and they got killed by Kansas State. And then you got to turn it around after a bye week and play against the preseason favorite in Utah, which yeah. at the time was ranked number 10. At I know that time. things have yeah. things have changed since then for the Utes. But, you know, Utah was ranked top 10. Arizona went on the road in Salt Lake City. And, you know, that's a place that Utah just doesn't really – lose at you know their record at rice cycle stadium i think they've lost going into that arizona game only lost three games at home since 2018 yeah so, arizona knows all about that from the pac-12 days i mean yeah arizona uh, utah was yeah right <laughs> yeah and and so going on the road and really leaning on each other and just ignoring all the noise yeah. all of the, the chatter uh, they were able to put together it wasn't the best performance right but they had five fourth down stops okay um or no excuse me four fourth down stops five pass breakups by takari davis which got a big 12 player of the week and that game right there so far has been the season defining win for the wildcats they're trying to find more <laughs> memorable moments but yeah like you said i think there's something to yeah. going on the road it just kind of 
ignoring the noise and just focusing on one and oh this week. Yeah, and, and fans kind of got a little angry and Brown kind of alluding to that and, and saying to the effect of maybe we need a break from being at home. I don't uh, it was a little out of context the way people were trying to put it, but you know, it's almost true. I almost can get it. Yeah. I mean, that um, it almost is the case. So West Virginia now going on the road to face Arizona. Now you mentioned a lot about Arizona's offense struggling. And even though West Virginia has had this disappointing season so far and their offense hasn't been nearly what it's supposed to be. It wasn't, it hasn't been what it was last year. And Garrett green hasn't not nearly been what he was last year as well. And the eight interceptions are already double what he had last year. But West Virginia has also shown they can score points, even in losses. They've been scoring points. So do you think Arizona can contain the West Virginia offense if you're getting the good West Virginia offense enough? Or can Arizona hang with the good West Virginia offense? Or do you almost need – for? I guess I'll ask it better. For Arizona to win – do you need Garrett Green to throw the two picks again, like he's been doing in every loss? Do you need that Garrett Green that if he calms down and doesn't turn it over, is that going to spell disaster for, for the Wildcats then? I think the Wildcats need some takeaways. I think they need some turnovers. Uh, unless Until I'm proven otherwise, I don't think Arizona can keep up with a lot of teams in college football right now. Okay. Uh, the offense, I mean, the narrative going into last week was they're so close. They're on the fringe. They're getting into the plus side of the field but they can't score touchdowns. They're relying too much on Tyler Loop, their kicker, who's going to be kicking on Sundays here very soon, and their defense to make some stops. The offense last week took a ginormous step back. They were uh, they had just as many punts as points. They had more penalties than points. Like It was just not a good game offensively for Arizona. So, like I said, averaging just under 17 points per game in the last, what, six games – I think Arizona against West Virginia, because like you said, even when they have struggled, they still figure out a way to score points right, in yeah. the Mountaineers. So I think yeah. Arizona, they have to figure out a way to like Iowa this game. Like <laughs> man, no you're... points. Man. And really relying on field position and figuring out a way to use the defense and it's going to be an ugly game. I think this is going to be like a, a 17 to 14 type of right. game. Yeah. I was going to say if Arizona wins it, then if Arizona wants be, to win. Yeah. It's going to be a, an interesting game to, to, to watch and cover. Yeah. And that, although West Virginia has won games like that too, maybe the defense plays better on the road. You never know. This is one of those games. It's very hard to pick. It's hard to get a feel for who's maybe going to save their season. Who, who has better vibes. It, it really is. If that's kind of where you're leaning, because these teams probably are both evenly matched talent-wise, and disappointment meter, too, so far. Do you think Arizona can stop West Virginia on the ground? Because Jaheim White is one of those injured players from recent weeks that Brown has said he's going to play. C.D. Donaldson played. He's been a sensation as well. He didn't get hurt. So the one facet of the game for the Mountaineers is Jaheim White and C.D. Donaldson, the two-headed monster on the ground that usually always get yards. They are both playing. So if especially – and we're recording this before an official announcement. I do believe Nico Marchiol is going to start this game. So I'll say that here, especially if he ends up being the starter and he has less scramble in his legs and green can't go. You're going to get a lot of CD Donaldson and Jaheim white. Can they handle two backs one after the other ground and pound, or maybe does that fall into the lap of Arizona? I think honestly, that's going to be a benefit for the Mountaineers because the, the Wildcats right now, they've been using a lot of their uh, like their dime package. Yeah. So they have like extra DBs out there. Uh, they have uh, they take they took away one linebacker, added an extra DB and they have like a standing defensive lineman. Chase Kennedy uh, was that guy uh, for the Wildcats um, last week against Colorado and it almost seemed like they were kind of like inviting the run, right? They had so much space right there in, in the, yeah. the, on the front line. And so if you're a team like a West Virginia that runs the ball so well, I think if, if they get that run game going, it's going to be curtains for Arizona. It, it, just based on what I've seen and the defense that I think they're going to use. Um, I think that this could be a really big game for West Virginia's uh, rushing 
attack. And you know what? Garrett Green, too, if he somehow magically plays, yeah. Um, which I mean, he's he still could play, but and sure, yeah. You know, he's the leading rusher for the Mountaineers, if I'm not mistaken, right? So he's a really good runner too. The, the yeah, he RPO had almost 90 yards against Kansas State. As bad as that team played, and that they they did lose. I mean, they were kind of in it in the first half with him. He he threw two picks, and they were still very much in the game, and and then had a, almost 90 yards on the ground. For any Arizona fan who just sees the box score, West Virginia got beat down, but. Garrett Green, Wyatt Milam, who's an NFL product that I'm sure everyone's heard of, those guys, they didn't play in that second half. There were several Mountaineers that did not play. Jaheim White did not play in that second half. So West Virginia basically had their junior varsity out there in the second half, and then it was just curtains, and it was all over. They were in the game, and they were driving, and they scored. They went 90 yards twice at the end of the first half. One of them they scored. The other one, Brown, went for went on fourth, and they didn't even get any points out of. And I, and I asked Brown, and he got mad at me, did you consider hooking green regardless of injury because of the two picks? He has eight this year. They've scored. The opponent scored on pretty much all of them this season. And he yeah, he got mad and said it was non-starter. Next question. So it looked like momentum was building, and then all of a sudden your QB is out, and Brown did not know that until in the locker room at halftime. I'm sure they probably would have still lost, but I feel like the game would not have been 48-18. Yeah. 45-18 was the, was the final. It might have been more respectable. So if you get that group or even if you get something like that, then maybe that is a benefit for the Mountaineers. But, yeah, Green certainly can run it. And many West Virginia fans actually think he's trying to pass too much that you just go into – Garrett Green college football and stop worrying about what the NFL wants to see. And that actually will help this West Virginia team because he's a dual threat. He's, he's not, yep. he goes to the Manning passing Academy every year, but he's not paid Manning. Like he, it almost sometimes feels like he's trying to get away from, from what he does. Justin Spears here joining me on Mountaineer report here, WV sports. Now be writer for the Tucson star and also host that ESPN Tucson as we are previewing West Virginia, Arizona, now, I do want to ask you, speaking of Green, speaking of the quarterback situation, Nico Marchiol, an Arizona high school product, now with West Virginia, came to the Mountaineers as a four-star. Some maybe was, thought that was a surprising ad for West Virginia. He's played at times. He did win a couple games last year, including replacing Green in the backyard brawl, winning against Texas Tech. His numbers have really never been great. He looked good at camp this year. He didn't impress at all in the second half against Kansas State. If you watch that, the coaches even said he had a rough week. They were not expecting much, and it was really, really bad. If he is the starter, number one, is that being discussed at all around the area that he is kind of coming home? He's going to have a lot of his family there regardless. And what do you kind of know about him and maybe him from high school and maybe that recruitment or anything on – Nico from from the other side perspective outside of maybe what West Virginia fans already know from watching him for a couple of years. So I do know his family has uh, ties to Colorado right. and his his older brother Santino actually played linebacker for the Arizona Wildcats under Kevin Sumlin for a brief time. Uh, okay. He he was a, a Texas A&M linebacker transferred to Arizona and got kicked off the Arizona football team after a video surfaced of him making Lord. racial remarks about teammates. Oh, wow. And so okay. that's that's how Santino Marchiol's time ended at Arizona. I don't think he's been playing football since then, obviously. <laughs> that was a, a while ago. But yeah. um, So Santino Marchiol, he was at Arizona, and then his brother was playing two hours up the road at Chandler Hamilton High School. And Hamilton High School is a dominant program in the state of Arizona. It's one of the top. It's one of the cream of the crop. And a couple of uh, Nico's teammates at Arizona or at Hamilton, they currently play for the Wildcats now. Defensive back Genesis Smith, who's going to be in the, the starting secondary on Saturday, and also starting inside linebacker Tay Brown. So those okay. two guys are very familiar with Nico playing at Hamilton. And I just remember him being one of the the who's who in terms of, of Arizona high school football. He was an elite quarterback who was a household name. You had to go watch Nico Marchial and the, the Hamilton Huskies play. And, yeah, he was a highly talented recruit, obviously went to West Virginia, yeah. uh, got replaced by uh, Garrett Green. And I think he's a fantastic quarterback. I, I think whoever plays 
on Saturday, the Wildcats are going to have their hands full. Okay. Nico is not as dual threat as a Garrett Green, but it's not like he's a statue. Right? No, he I'm tries like, to run. He just doesn't run as effectively. But yeah. Yeah. So this is going to be a tough task for Arizona. And I think one is left-handed, one is right-handed. You're correct. Yep. So Arizona, they've had their, their work cut out for them, trying to prepare for either of these quarterbacks. But yeah, Nico is definitely a big deal out here in Arizona playing for the Hamilton Huskies. Now, it is interesting because West Virginia fans even knew how highly touted he was. And it's not that West Virginia can't get a highly touted recruit. They can. They've had great players before. It didn't feel to me maybe that he, that who Nico is fit what West Virginia does. Seemed like an odd recruitment a little bit. And in the mix there of Green now being the starter, West Virginia recruited Nico. And then, if you remember, brought in JT Daniels for the Van Wilder of college football oh, to kind yeah. of end things. Yeah, JT started in 2022. So they kind of pushed the line even further out. And many West Virginia fans, really, every year now, are expecting Nico to transfer, figuring that you recruit me as a four star and then you just bring in a myriad of QBs. And I'm all further down the depth chart that he would get a little upset. Did you think the, the recruitment and him eventually choosing West Virginia was at all odd? Did that make sense? Why did he not end up at Arizona? Because it wasn't like he was a two-star dominant in the rough. This kid did have national attention as a recruit. And Arizona, it's not like we're talking, you know, Arizona's Ohio State here. They're looking at similar kids West Virginia would be looking at. Why did he go across the country to the Mountaineers? Why not Arizona? Did you think that was odd? And then have you heard anything even about Nico and um, any people in Arizona? Like, when is he ever going to get a chance with West Virginia? Because it's been, it was, what was he, 2021, 2022? Yeah, 2021. Yeah. And then now we're in 2024. And next year, he's probably the guy, but if Brown's fired, then you don't know. And Nico's probably looking to transfer. Well, and that's the thing is, you know, when Neil Brown was first hired by West Virginia, like that yeah. was when he was getting settled in, right? So Neil yeah, Brown was able, nineteen early, yeah. In the tenure, yeah. So you know, a couple years in, he was able to kind of sell what he was building at West Virginia, or more like yeah. extending, right? Because I mean, West Virginia, I mean, traditionally, I would say has been a, a top twenty program. Right. Top yeah. 20, I mean, top 30 uh, program in the last uh, couple decades. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, historically, Ren Baker, the AD, and it really is true if you look into it, tries to sell it as an historically speaking 150 years of college football, a top 25, top 30 program. It is the 15th winningest 15 conference titles, which is a very high bar. It's top 25 in a lot of these history numbers, even just bowl appearances to compare Arizona and West Virginia. I think Arizona, what bowl appearances all time is like 22, 23, something like that. That sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, West Virginia, for Arizona fans who would be amazed by this number, West Virginia has 40. Wow. 40 bowl appearances. The last one last year was their 40th bowl appearance. So, yes, there's been a lot of historic success. The 2018 time, the fans were kind of done with Dana, but he was ranked all through that year. Yeah. So, Neil Brown took over a program that was perennial ranked, and now one of three programs in the last six years that's not been in the AP poll at all, which mm – -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure fans think like that. That doesn't really fit West Virginia. Should it one one week or another in six years should crawl in there? Um, yeah, but Nico again, he went across the country to West Virginia but, on on a sales pitch from Brown early on. Exactly, and it, it was a couple years into his tenure, and so Neil Brown could really sell Nico. And you have you also have to think about Arizona at that time, the 2021 recruiting class. That was Kevin Sumlin's very last year. At Arizona, because he got okay. fired in 2020 after the COVID season. And that 2021 class just did not really have anybody in that class. And nobody wanted to touch Arizona football okay. with a 100-foot pole, right? They didn't want to get anywhere close to that train wreck that was the Kevin Sumlin era at Arizona. And also, you have to think, from Nico's perspective, he's like, well, I know that my brother did something wrong, but I, <laughs> well, they also yeah, picked yeah, off yeah. my brother from yeah, the football yeah. team. So, yeah, I'm not going down to play for Maybe go to Arizona State and stick it to him. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. That could have been another option. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The brother thing I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't count in. But has there been any talk or any conversation down there of, oh, maybe this could be a hometown kid that actually is coming in here? Yeah, I think the only guys who are really playing up the, the homecoming part for, for Nico are the – former Huskies. We spoke with yeah. Genesis Smith 
uh, this week. And, you know, he raved about Nico as a quarterback, said he was a great leader and a solid co- quarterback. So okay. uh, I think his former teammates are all in on the homecoming. Uh, <laughs> I have not heard about anything else outside of that, though. OK, yeah. I mean, again, this isn't a superstar. He hasn't really been able to be that. And there's still question marks on what the Mountaineers would look like with him as a starter next year because we're going to be out of eligibility and it would be Nico if Brown's still there. And who, who knows? Maybe maybe you get another crack at Nico in the portal if Brown's not there. Um, because well, also, I, too, I, I was going to say also the uh, Phoenix is like two hours ish away from. Yeah, yeah, it's not exactly right. True. So it's not. I mean, I don't know how far Pittsburgh is from Morgantown. It's about an about an hour, about, about an hour. So yeah, so think about double that trip. Yeah, it's he's coming back to Arizona for sure, but it's not necessarily like a true homecoming. Yeah, I mean that that Neil Brown even talked about that. He actually literally said, asked Nico if he even carries Arizona as his state because you could argue Colorado. And then yeah, it's not exactly where he was from. He couldn't walk down the street and, and go to campus. You're getting in your car and driving a couple hours, and maybe wouldn't be the same type of thing yeah so that makes sense to if you had to make a pick for this game though i don't know if you did on your show yet what are you what are you feeling i mean again both of these programs gotta win the big 12 is so freaking wide open that i think we you and i both know that the winner of this game is going to have a post-game press conference saying if we rally we're right back in this thing because there's going to be teams that are going to get upset and then you know, if you crawl into an eight win season and somehow you're in Dallas, I don't think anyone will be too upset, even though the year has been so bad so far, even though that sounds wild. But what what are you you thinking here? Because it's almost like an elimination game. The loser of this yeah. game is is looking at they're they're fighting for bowl eligibility at best where the winner can maybe try to make something happen, I guess. Yeah, this is a, a monumental game for both teams and both fan bases, too. Right. Yeah. You know, Neil Brown is six, seven years into this thing. Right. And so West Virginia fans are clamoring for, (laughs) you know, a a turnaround. And meanwhile, Arizona fans are looking at Brent Brennan like, dude, you got all this talent. What are you doing with it, man? Like this is this was supposed to be the year, you know, for Arizona football. So I mean, I I really don't know, man. I really don't know. I think that I think Arizona is going to ugly it up a lot. I think they're going to figure out a way to try to control time of possession. To be honest with you, I think this is a coin flip game, but I think Arizona is going to figure out a way to make it ugly. And I think the winner of the Rich Rod Bowl, a.k.a. the Tony (laughs) Fields Bowl, a.k.a. the Scotty Young Junior Bowl, (laughs) uh, I think think the winner is going to be uh, the Wildcats. I'm going to go 17-14, but, man, I think it go either way. Yeah, I, I yeah, and I kind of feel the exact same way. But I I I've, I've picked West Virginia to win this game off of kind of feeling like they're better off on the road. If this game, the weirdest thing off of what you said at the open of the show, if this game was in Morgantown, I almost would definitely not pick West Virginia because they might have nobody at the stadium. It would just be more coverage on how bad that is. You would get national media showing pictures saying you know 15th winningest program has 15 people at the game. You'd hear those jokes. Like I I think it's almost better to be on the road maybe for West Virginia in all honesty, and maybe that that could lead them to a win. And also it's almost very Neil Brown-esque because Neil Brown-esque would win on the road, not do it at home, win the game that no one's watching, not be able to win the big game, crawl into seven, eight wins, keep his job, have nobody want him there. That's just the era. So like that, <laughs> that's just the era. And that almost feels like the path we're going down again. I'm going to go West Virginia. I don't think it's going to be like the West Virginia wins, though, of old, where it's 30-plus points. I do kind of think this is going to be a different game, maybe more of like a 26-20, something maybe in that variety, maybe 26. You're almost telling me in Arizona can't score that many points. I don't know, maybe 26-14, something like that. I think West Virginia is going to win this game, but – you never know because maybe part of that 20 is turnovers. I mean, Garrett Green, again, he's coughing up points to the opponent. So maybe Arizona can get some points, not even having to worry about their offense, putting them on the board. I think, and that'll be interesting too, that if Green does play, and I'm not expecting it, and again, before the official announcement, whenever you're watching this, but if Green does play, I'd be curious. If you're seeing two more picks that go to 14 points again, he can snap at whoever he wants in media. I feel like at some point you're going to have to yank 
or else you're just keeping a guy to help him out in the future and screwing your own season, which then could lead to you being out of a job. So it'll be very interesting how green is handled if he does play and he plays poorly and they lose again. And yeah, it almost sounds like Arizona kind of wants a new head coach as well. So I don't know if you want a coaching swap um, <laughs> to get further connect this winner gets uh, rich rod. Yeah. Yeah. The winner gets rich rod. His games are at least interesting. I don't know if you're you know, like Wednesday evening, I yeah. turn that on occasionally. Sometimes I miss it and it's like, wow, you know, 45 to 42 like what a game i'm watching and yeah uh yeah so the winner gets rich rod that would be something else here justin i i appreciate the time for sure we'll be checking in uh, to see yeah. to see what happens in this game it probably is a coin flip that i do not recommend anybody betting in and uh since you're on here and you you, you follow the whole conference just want to quickly also ask you do you have a big 12 champ pick because obviously Iowa State's looking really, really strong right now. Kansas State is still really, really good, but they have the lost game in hand to BYU. BYU's turn it around quickly. They look really good. West Virginia doesn't play a lot of these teams. Colorado, they're kind of fading out a little bit. Utah's out of it now with, with rising hurt. Who do you think goes to the playoff out of the Big 12? I think it's going to be Kansas State. I okay. really do. I think they are exactly what we thought Utah was going to be a team that plays really good defense and a team that knows how to run the hell out of the football. Uh, Avery Johnson. I mean, he is a stud. He's a very athletic quarterback. I think they have two great running yeah, backs. He looked good against West Virginia. Yeah. And uh, DJ Giddens and Dylan Edwards. Right. And so I think their brand of football, it works. And Avery Johnson starting to develop as a passing yeah. Yeah. quarterback too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I picked Iowa State number two in my preseason poll, and people thought I was freaking crazy down here in Tucson. And now I'm starting to look like a genius because Matt Campbell and the Cyclones are uh, – they have their best start since literally the Great Depression. No, yeah, and, yeah. I mean, the, the last time Iowa State won a conference title, I looked it up the other day just to double check, 1912. Oh, when Arizona became a state. Nice. <laughs> well, how about that? <laughs> yeah, so, like, that's the cra- – that's also what I try to sell to West Virginia fans who think, like, well, they can't possibly compete in this era – I mean, when you have an MLB owner and Pat McAfee talking you up every single day and you're top 30 in NIL, and then Iowa State in Ames, Iowa, is vying for the national title, you can. Um, yep. so <laughs> you, you can. And that's the reality now. Yeah, I mean, it would be kind of an upset off of what Iowa State's doing now with Rocco Beck, who's another West Virginia connection. That it, Yeah, Kansas State wouldn't be a bad pick at all. It does feel like Kansas State and Iowa State are kind of on a collision course. And then once you get there, Kansas State certainly could win that game. Maybe somebody can get tripped. And maybe Iowa State's vulnerable. They almost just got tripped. I know Kansas State fans talk a lot of the time that if they could play that BYU game over again, they think they would win the second time around when they weren't really in the first game. So that'll be interesting what happens there. And I I picked Utah preseason in the Big 12 media. I did I did go with Utah, just kind of chalk, and they didn't. They clearly haven't got it done. I, I, Neil Brown, actually, you mentioned being high on Iowa State and people making fun of you. Neil Brown was livid before the season that people picked Iowa State over West Virginia because West Virginia had so much of a better year last year. He was pissed. He even named it. Like, how can we be behind them? And uh, that looks like comments that he is going to be eating um, (laughs) this season as well, with many other comments that he said this year and already has lost to them this year. So, Justin, I appreciate the time. Um, I'll be seeing you on social media, and (laughs) I'm sure we'll be talking again somewhere. Mike, you're the man. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. So Justin Spears, the beat writer for Arizona, covering the Wildcats for the Tucson Star and also host with ESPN Tucson. I joined him on his show earlier this week to talk this game from the West Virginia side. So I had to get him on here to talk the Arizona perspective. And yeah, this is a this is a coin flip game. I don't know. He doesn't really know. We don't even really want to give picks. I certainly wouldn't bet any of my money on this. Wouldn't recommend you betting on yours. Uh, you, I kind of been able to gauge most of these games this year, honestly. You can kind of feel going into the game what's going to happen. Okay, I didn't, you know, I, I felt better than what the result ended up being. I'm not saying I was perfect in all these picks. But for West Virginia this year, but this is one I just do not know. I do not know. And and before the season, I would have told you, and I kind of almost wrote this, that I thought this would be one of those losses, even if they're in the midst of a good year. It's a long road trip, kind of like the Houston game. It just didn't feel good. It felt like this is a game that Arizona would take. But Arizona's been really down this year. They also are really banged up. I put that article in WV Sports Now with a lot of uh, Justin's coverage there and from their press conferences. And 
they're almost more banged up than West Virginia. If West Virginia can establish the run, which they have done in their big wins, Oklahoma State, they really established the run if you watch that game. No, it's not a good OSU team, but neither is Arizona. And if West Virginia does that, then it's likely the West Virginia offense is going to be able to do enough to set up the path regardless of who's the quarterback, get a big play here or there, control the clock, and, yeah, maybe win it more 20 to 14, 26 to 20, I think he, I think Justin has 17, 14, something like that. I mean, this isn't going to be probably a 38, 34 game. This is not going to be a repeat of the backyard brawl. I would expect lower uh, on the scoring and maybe that falls into Arizona's lap, but West Virginia also has to avoid trying to cough up points, greens, picks, leading to turnovers, leading to defensive scores. All that cannot happen. All that cannot happen. And I, and I do think going into a buy, I've always thought Neil Brown would last this entire year regardless and that Ren Baker would make a decision in the offseason. He probably, I'm sure, has a list and is thinking about things now. We're not all stupid. Everyone knows that. But I definitely thought New, New Brown would last the year. They'd let the buyout keep calming down, then make a decision. And if they get blown out in this game, even with it being on the road, and then there's a bye week, this would be the opportunity in the middle of the year for this to happen. I do believe, and I'll say this, that if West Virginia loses this game bad to Arizona and they don't fire Neil Brown during the bye. So you would have two weeks to think about, you know, from beginning of this week to then, but a week, full week after the game. Then I think he lasts the year and they just let it happen. And if it's real bad, it's real bad. If they crawl into a bowl, they crawl into a bowl. They chalk up 41, whatever. I don't think they believe in the team anymore, but I don't think they fire him if they lose this game real, if they, if if they don't, if they don't, I don't think they fire him later. If they don't fire him now during this buy, but if they lose it really bad, they could fire him during the buy, and that wouldn't surprise me now because you'd have this buy. So this buy is coming at a real bad time for Neil Brown, in my opinion, to try to last this whole year because there'd be a long week to he's gonna, you know, the one presser and that'll be it. Maybe we won't even have it, and it'll be conversations. That'll be a lot for Ren Baker to think about. That'll be a lot for him to have those one on ones. They might, you know, they might be like, mm, "What can we give you money wise? We got to move on, negotiate something." Then that that'll be. They're still ahead of basketball season. It's bad timing there if you lose real bad here. But I, I think mean, Ren Baker can de- Ren Baker can dedicate a couple days to. I'm just thinking about West Virginia football and yeah, six years of no ranking. It's not what it was in the past. Justin Spears thinks the history is good, but the present's not. So we got to move on. So I think he wants to make sure the vibe nationally doesn't get so bad that if you're realigning the conferences again, the West Virginia doesn't have to worry about things. And we'll see. And I've talked about it many, many other shows. West Virginia's NIL is better than people think. It's not great. It's not elite. It's better than people think. The athletic department, yeah, they go in the red most years, but so does 90% of athletic programs in the country. Almost nobody makes any money, guys. Almost nobody does, unless maybe you're Ohio State. And the school situation financially is not the same as the athletic department or the NIL. And if they absolutely have to fire him because they win two games, you know, win two games in a year, obviously they won more than that so far, or even finish this year with just the three wins. It can happen. It can, things can be worked out. I don't think they're stuck for three years. Like some others are saying, I don't think the program never can contend. If Iowa state can contend, so can they. And I do think maybe somebody else is needed in there. And Brown's been, you know, he got the nukes mayo bowl. I think some of the hates, a bit too much. He's a really good guy. And I think he'll have a career in the future somewhere else where maybe he'll rally a group of five to get in the playoff one year. He did it at Troy where they're a contender and won 10 games, multiple years. But this job I don't think is for him. And I don't think this job is going to be a job that he'll he'll end his career with. I don't think he's going to have a statue with this job. I don't think West Virginia is going to get back to national relevance and truly contend for a Big 12 title, which they should be able to do in this iteration of the Big 12 in this era of college football as the playoff likely expands again with Neil Brown. So if he is able to save his job, you're probably looking at a similar situation next year as well. And I don't think Nico, I think Nico looked better this year. I think I know what Justin said about Nico from high school and he's he's a player. I think Nico's worse than Garrett Green, even while Green's making these mistakes. That's part of why I get Neil Brown sticking with Green so much. I think Green's certainly better for the present. And 
I don't buy Nico leading this team to nine, 10 wins either. I think you're looking at, you know, seven, eight at best with Nico in a full season next year as well. If it were me in charge, I would go into the portal and try to find a better quarterback. I know you can't, you know, break the bank and I don't know who's necessarily out there to go nab. And it is a risk. The JT Daniels thing was money that was not well spent and that you wasted, but I would try. I would try. You still have Jaheim White. You, once you resign those guys, because you're going to have to try to do that, Traylon Ray, Jaheim White, they're young enough. There's eligibility there. Once you can lock them up, as long as you do lock them up, if you are keeping Neil Brown, hypothetically, I would try to get a QB in the portal and try to be even better and retool the roster even more because they did get major conference transfers this past season in a quality offseason. If Neil Brown is not back, it's just all up in the air because half the roster will probably leave. Jaheim, Traylon, Ray, et cetera, Rodney Gallagher, all recruited by Neil Brown. They probably wouldn't be there with a new guy, and it's just a whole new ball of wax with whether it's Jimbo Fisher, Kirk Tignetti, somebody else, whoever. Koto Nicky, OC at Penn State. That's something that a lot of fans I know kind of want that would be a little different than what Rain Baker normally does because he does not normally just hire purely assistants. He likes some head coaching experience, even if from a lower level. We will see. Thanks to Justin Spears, though, Arizona beat, football beat writer for the Tucson Star and also host on ESPN Tucson for jumping aboard as we previewed West Virginia and Arizona. These are two notable programs. I'll give them that. Notable programs in this new Big 12 that were supposed to do something this year that are just not it is the Rich Rod Bowl. The winner of this game does not get Rich Rod, though, factually. But the winner of this game gets to at least save some vibes for this season where the loser of this game can maybe only dream of days with Rich Rod. And that's pretty much all she wrote.